This device is called a gyroplane, or gyrocopter, or autogyro, depending on how pedantic you want to be. That's a debate for the comment section down below. So what is a gyroplane? Invented by Juan La Siviera in 1923, the machine looks like an airplane with a windmill mounted at the top. The machine boasted excellent flight characteristics and the unique ability of the time to land with a minimal ground roll. However, once the helicopter was invented, the advancements in the gyroplane fell to the wayside due to the limitations of the design and the helicopter's ability to take off and land vertically. But this looks nothing like an airplane with a helicopter blade attached to it. Well, after World War II, Igor Benson took the design to a new dimension. Losing the airplane fuselage and wings, this configuration looks like a launcher with some aluminum bits and helicopter blades. And that's what fascinates me with its simplicity. The first time I ever saw this machine was in one of the earlier James Bond films, and that was a Ken Walls design that supposedly fit in a few suitcases, but too bad Younger Me didn't actually know that was all just movie stage and none of that was real. And the second time was in Mad Max, where the gyro captain or whatever had another gyrocopter. That was also really cool. So, with that out of the way, let me tell you about the black magic of the gyrocopter. Now I've been building RC airplanes for a very, very long time. Not to toot my own horn, but most of my fixed wing airplanes have usually flown on the first time. The gyrocopter, however, is some dark arts of nonsense and magic. It's kind of like building a helicopter from scratch in an airplane. But this thing, never had good luck with. I finally got some luck with it a long time ago. I really wish I had some video of this, but this machine right here actually flew. Fast forward a few years, and I got this Kaleidus 50E, a giant fiberglass gyrocopter. Unfortunately, I didn't really know how to fly it, and the result was like this. Oh, whoa! You're not supposed to do that. Fast forward a few years, and I finally got to fly a factory gyrocopter when I was working at Flight Test. It actually flew well. Yeah! Why? Until I crashed. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Ah. Now, here we are in the present. With my re-interest ignited in this machine, it is time for me to finally figure out how to build a real gyrocopter of my own design and kind of explain to you guys how it works because I haven't really been able to find very many resources about gyrocopter design, especially gyrocopter models. Step one involved doing some research online and trying to replicate what I saw. I found this gyroprint copter, mainly the head here. I did not replicate it exactly to the T and that's kind of some of the issues, but the more research I've done, the more I figured out that these small machines Every single one of them online flew with a flight stabilizer, which basically flies the machine for you in some aspects. The reason why is this machine is so squirrely and touchy that a normal human can't actually put in the inputs required to fly. But I wanted to build a jar carpet that could naturally fly on its own without the use of fancy electronics and whatever. I want it to manually be stable enough that it flies like a real jar copter, because I have one of those too. So obviously this machine crashed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey Steven, I put the pitch blocks on the wrong way for this rotor blade. So they're positively inclined, so they would never ever start no matter how many times you ran into the wind. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Not totally deterred with the smashing and crashing of this machine, I found the old gyrocopter that I had from a long time ago. This one, I actually got to work. So I just took that, scaled up a little bit more because I know bigger flies better, and I built a three-bladed rotor head, unlike these two-bladed rotor heads you see here. This is more realistic, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So I built this machine with a three-bladed rotor head, and surprisingly, it flew. <laughs> The initial design flew with a three-bladed Delta-style rotor blade head. This was constructed of a flexible material such as G10 fiberglass plate that allowed the blades to flap up and down as it rotated around the gyrocopter. There's much more than attaching a rotor blade to the top of a fuselage than what one is led to believe. That's different. Gyroplanes all need the ability to account for asymmetric lift. When the gyroplane is moving forward through the air, the advancing blade produces more lift than the retreating blade. Something needs to be done to prevent the machine from rolling over, and this flexible plate allows lightweight balsa wood blades to move so. However, this configuration is not good enough. My 
gyrocopter actually has a teetering style head which looks like a seesaw with rotor blades attached to it. I wanted to build that because I want this machine to fly like my big one will to teach me more about how this thing really behaves. Obviously crashing this one is a lot cheaper on the machine and my medical bills than the real one. As you can see, we've crashed a lot. Now that more time has gone by, I can kind of sum up my experience and hopefully save you if you want to replicate this project, what I did, and how to not replicate the same mistakes. So in the early iterations, the machine was smaller. I've learned that making it bigger, always better. Much more stable, much easier to see, and much easier to fly. The second thing I learned is aerodynamics don't exactly scale well. I copied the tall tail gyrocopter design that's famous in the Dominator gyro plane and kept the same proportions. On the big machine, it works great. On this small machine, it doesn't work so well. Every time I took this thing off, it was a handful to fly. It was like not very stable, and I wonder what was going on here. Maybe I need more nose weight, maybe I didn't. <laughs> what I did find out was that adding a longer tail to the machine made it so much easier to fly, so much more naturally stable. The aerodynamic issue also goes to the blade design. Gyrocopters power the rotors through the oncoming stream of air. If you watch these in flight, the rotor is tilted backwards, unlike a helicopter flying forwards. The oncoming air flows upwards through the rotor system, and if you have the proper airfoils, they'll drive themselves once enough energy is introduced into the system to be in auto rotation. Tree. <laughs> Since aerodynamics don't exactly scale well, I need to add a negative 1.5 degrees of incidence in relation to the rotor hub to get these things to actually turn. Now, this is very easy to do because these blades are all 3D printed. Some of the earlier handmade blades I had, eh, not so much. We had to add shims to that and it was very unreliable. In this latest iteration that I'm releasing to you guys, the blades are actually twisted and they taper. I talked to the designer of the Dominator gyro plane at the Benson Days Gyrocopter event, and he told me to add some reflex into the airfoil, which I did here. And this greatly improves the performance of this thing because I have more negative twist here to drive the rotor blades. And if you come further out to the machine, I start taking the twist out. And then over here, it actually just goes flat where it's actually no longer pitched downwards. It's actually just level. So hopefully it produces more lift. So more lift is being produced in the outer portions. More driving force is produced in the inner section of the rotor blades. Now, one very interesting thing I learned was that these 3D printed blades, they're really heavy in relation to the machine and compared to other RC people making their own machines. This three blade head worked great for my lightweight balsa wood blades. However, when I put these heavy aluminum blades on with all the plastic, the machine would always take off gracefully. It would build a perfect rotor RPM and then would violently pitch up and then roll over and smash in the ground every single time. Now I was able to kind of get it to fly by taking off some of these shims and I only flying with just one piece of G10 fiberglass and reducing some of the rotor mass here. But once again, once the rotor RPM picked up too fast, the machine would crash. What was going on was that this plate flexes like this. However, because of the weight of these blades and the amount of centrifugal force applied to this rotor head, this thing became dead stiff and it would not flex at all and it doesn't account for that asymmetric lift. So this jar copper would just immediately pitch up and roll over. If you guys wanna find out more about the science behind this, I have this huge RC groups thread that I've been reading. It hurts my brain, it might hurt yours too, but you can check it out if you wanna learn something. So that's just step one of the problem is building a flyable machine. Step two is learning how to fly a gyrocopter. There's not a lot of information on how to fly an RC gyrocopter, and to save you guys the trouble, we're going to walk through those steps right now in case you want to build your own. I did it, I did it. I finally have a setup that works. It flies great now. There are five phases to getting your gyrocopter to leave the ground. Pre-rotation, RPM building, the wheel balance, liftoff, and building airspeed. Once all that's done, it flies like an airplane. There's nothing for me to tell you. Pre-rotation is exactly how it sounds. We're just putting enough energy into the blades to get them to turn on their own. With no motor, you have to hand start this and you have to taxi around all over the place. Once enough RPM is established, you can begin your takeoff roll and build the rest of the required RPM for flight. At this time, I will pull back on the cyclic or aft stick to get the rotor to catch maximum amount of air, 
This does induce more drag, so you want to slowly add more power. Soon enough, rotor RPM will begin to produce enough lift to pitch the gyro back on its rear wheel. At this time, the gyrocopter will slow down as well. You'll have to add even more power and slowly release that forward cyclic stick. But what you're looking for is this thing called a wheel bounce, where the gyrocopter is like bouncing between the rear wheel and the front wheel, just bouncing on the mains is what it's called. Once you're bouncing on the mains, simply add just a little bit more power, and soon the gyrocopter will unstick from the ground and begin flying. At this stage, you're going to need to reduce even more of that back cyclic pressure and add even more airspeed and build up more airspeed for the gyrocopter to fly. At this stage, rotor RPM will be going crazy, it'll be picking up tons of speed, and at this point, you can just fly away. What most fixed wing pilots will do, however, is do their fixed wing pilot takeoff techniques, which is to just add full power and then pull back on the stick once you get to a certain airspeed. That will destroy your gyrocopter immediately. So the second method to crashing a gyrocopter on takeoff is doing everything perfect with the pre-rotation, the rotor RPM building, maybe the wheel balance and the lift off. However, when people lift off, they pull back on the cyclic and don't add a whole lot of power or they add all the power, depending on how underpowered your machine is, it will actually just load up the rotor blades even more and you'll just settle back down to the ground. Sometimes violently, but this does crash a number of full scale machines in the real world too. So obviously, yeah, at this point, you're just flying. It flies like an airplane. Just get used to it. It's really unique. You can land in like small amount of area with a small amount of ground rollout. And that's it. There's not a whole lot for me to tell you. Obviously, I'm going to share all these files down below. I really don't have a whole lot of how to build this because it's all just aluminum towel bars and some other aluminum tidbits. You will have to get kind of crafty. I initially wanted to 3D print the whole thing, but at this size, I don't feel it's safe to put 3D printed parts with this kind of stress unless you want to eat a rotor blade. I will release the full CAD file, which is Infusion, if you guys want to part it out and figure out how to build it, because I'll give you the dimensions there as well. So, why did I build a gyrocopter? That's because of this machine over here. That's going to be in an upcoming video where I fly an actual gyrocopter. I've been getting a little bit of training for that, and I really want to, you know, Mad Max it around or fly like 007 or whatever. So look forward to that in the future. That's coming real soon. <laughs>